The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we're going to mix market so far. You're looking at an S&P negative by seven points right now, but well off the lows. We were down at about 43.60 on a couple occasions, whether it was last night right out of the gate at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time Sunday evening. S&Ps make it down to 43.52, so we're about 23 points above that level. Just as recently as 8 a.m., you were at a price of 43.60, so you're talking about popping about 15 points just in the last hour of trading as we come into the opening bell. We have a little bit of a rising yield this morning. Tech stocks slightly in the red. You get the NASDAQ 100 down about half a percent negative 67 points nasdaq 100 getting a pop in the last hour as well up from a low at 8 a.m you're talking about 14,681, so about 60 points over the last hour or so now we're dealing with a yield right now of 1.612 percent why don't we jump over to the 10 year uh negative seven ticks right now but off of the overnight lows as well we're positive by four ticks off of those lows on the session, though, you look at the action we had on Friday on the jobs number. Interesting action. The first move, a spike higher. And then, man, we gave it up in a big way. You had a spike high Friday morning on the jobs miss of 131.18. You traded down to 130.25 Sunday evening overnight. Yields 1.61%. 1, 1 the 30 years negative five ticks at 157.19. We got to talk about oil. $82.18, quite the run, even from Thursday. Look at that action. We were down below 75, and just like that, you're above 82. We're still up a buck 47 or almost 2% at 80.80 right now, but you see a little bit of a sell off since about 7 a.m. when we got that high in crude. You jump to gold, gold down about four bucks right now at 17.53. You see the action for the jobs Friday as well, gold up to 17.82. It gave it all back and then some by about 10.30 in the morning on Thursday. Friday, silver's down nine pennies at 2261. Silver kind of right back to where we started. Friday action. You take a look at silver. There's your daily. Put it back for a five year weekly. And look at this consolidation, right? Now, you are at an area in silver that we found some support backing things up to November of last year. We also had an acceleration, whether it was September, where silver really fell out of bed. That is a bar, folks, on a weekly basis from 27 and change down to 2181. We're sitting at 2261 right now in silver. Back to a 15 minute chart. We pull up the volatility index this morning with a VIX. Just above 20, when we were at lower prices. Overnight, right now, you're dealing with a VIX of 1975. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on to start the trading week. We start earnings for the quarter, and we kick it off on Wednesday with J.P. Morgan. Let's jump over to some of the banks real quick. J.P. Morgan, you're talking about higher prices again today. You're up a dollar. That's decent action on the banks. Uh, up a dollar. You do have rising yields. you got a 10-year now above 1.6%. Take a look at three-year weekly, my goodness, right? From where the market started to accelerate back in November of last year, you were had trading at 97 bucks on JP Morgan. Uh, the safety of buying a bank when you had yields at basically half a percent, all the upside you could want, and you're trading at 170.22. Now, putting this back on a daily, all right, you see the consolidation we were in, but look where we were September 20th. You're talking about adding about $21 to the price of where we were trading at. You had a low of 150.49 on September 20th, folks. It's only October 11th. So price is really accelerating on these banks as we come into earnings. Jump over to the Analyze tab and pull up the earnings. So they have numbers coming out October 13th, Wednesday, JP Morgan. They'll kick it off. We got a bunch of other banks coming out this week as well. Uh, about a $3 move priced in. Not really that dramatic when you think about the run this thing has had. For the weekly options, you take a look at October 15th, the ones expire on Friday. 
you're talking about neither direction. Now, these are as of Friday prices. These will recalibrate when we get a market open. We're trading about 170. And you can see about a at the money put or call going to cost you about $2.32. Uh, not really that big of a move in either direction. Only a $5.26 move for the entire week when they're coming out with their numbers. But we have lofty expectations for the banks. When you're basically talking about, I think that was an all-time high. Let's back it up. Sure was. All-time high you're talking about just made on J.P. Morgan. And is that Friday? No, that is Thursday's action. All-time high at 171.51 coming out with their numbers. All right. And let's jump around because I think we got a bunch more than that. Wells Fargo. They're going to be coming out with theirs on Thursday. Morgan Stanley going to come out on Thursday as well. Goldman Sachs coming out Friday morning, I imagine. City coming out Thursday as well. So they're all Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We basically get the entire selection of banks. Uh, really interesting when you look at where yields are coming into that event. We even have rising yields. We're above 1.6%. That's going to lead us to the 10-year. Now, the 10-year, you take a look at this thing. Let's put it on a five-year weekly to get the full consolidation. Five-year weekly, you look at where we were in the 10-year. I've brought it up many times, but we are now decisively breaking below the 382, and you're coming right down to these lows we had in March of this year. The 10-year at 130.30. I'm going to back this up to a daily so we can focus on this area. You're within five ticks, folks, of the lows that we had back in April. And we were just trading at 135.14 back in August. So you're talking about five full points almost, four and a half to be exact. We have dropped, and we're within five ticks of the low. Again, putting it back to a weekly. I mean, you break this area, yeah, we might have some support. Back in the lows of about 128.11, where is this low technically? You're looking at a price of maybe the high 127s in price of the 10-year. Um, but, man, in an environment where we have inflation that is not too transitory on certain aspects of life, whether it's oil, food, commodities, uh, you're going to see rising prices to do with a lot of we're seeing it. Whether it's FedEx, when they came out with their numbers, talking about $450 million in added expenses. Uh, you're seeing rising wages across the board, right? Target, they're paying $15 an hour for employees, and they're going to be adding $2 an hour on top of that for workers working extra hours of the holiday. All of that going to contribute to a rising rate environment, potentially. And we are at a critical area, potentially breaking below the lows we had in March. Uh We'll see where we go. But you're going to see some focus on that as we come into bank earnings this week. Taking a look at the S&P. Now, the S&P, quite a bounce we got last week. We miss on jobs on Friday. You come into Monday action, negative by five points. We had less than 200,000 jobs added for the month of September. All the expectation was going to be August, September, October, November, December. Expectations just building, folks, for October, November, December. The real risk is that... We don't make up the jobs that the market is thinking that we will make up in the next few months as hopefully some whether it's the service sector, et cetera, opens back up. The real risk is that inflation potentially runs hot. The jobs don't get made back up. The Fed needs to pair stimulus before the economy has fixed itself. The market not really pricing in that much of a risk. When you're talking about trading at 43.77, we have all-time highs of 45.49 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 trading at 14,752, about 1,000 points off of the highs we've had. You back the NASDAQ 100 up to the run we had from May, almost made it back to the 50%, 14,299. I think we made it down to 14,410, 14,367 the low. So within about 60, 70 points of that 50% retracement. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at some of the other banks as we're waiting for their earnings later in the week. We'll get ready for Monday trading coming up. Stay tuned. Be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P is negative by five points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by 55 points to get the Dow and the Russell sneaking into the positive. It was we got about 11 minutes to go until the opening bell. We jump over to let's take a look at the two richest men in the world right now. Two richest people in the world. Uh, Tesla shares up a dollar coming into the open 786. You have Amazon shares right now. Uh, we'll call it barely in the red 3277. I bring them up because it's interesting. There were a couple things that hit my feed this morning, uh, getting ready for the program. So the first one, which was interesting, I'm gonna pull this up. Uh, you had, so I saw this post, uh, I saw it on Instagram, I think is where I saw it. Bezos puts it out, um, listen and be open, but don't let anybody tell you who you are. This was just one of the many stories telling us all the ways we're gonna fail, uh, referencing a Barron's article from May of 1999. We'll check out that in a moment, Amazon, uh, today, Amazon's one of the most world's most successful companies, hard to argue with that, has revolutionized two entirely different industries, talking about, of course, uh, retail and the cloud, I'm sure, uh, every right there. And what this article uh, is, which is interesting, is that it says the idea that Amazon Jeff, uh, CEO Jeff Bezos has pioneered a new business paradigm is silly. He's just another middleman, and the stock market is beginning to catch on to that fact Imagine how wrong you could be, right? The real winners on the net will be the firms that sell their own products directly to consumers. Just look at what's happening in Sony, Dell, and Bartlesman. I'm not even familiar with Bartlesman, which says a lot uh, in its own right. Very familiar with Sony and Dell. Now, what was interesting was I saw this this morning. Now, this is dated right up here, May 31st, 1999, for $3 back then, uh, Barron's. Now, Dell shares, because of everything going on, I think they got taken private and then got public again. Uh, Dell, you only go back to as far as, I got December 2018 on this chart, okay? But Sony, not the case. Sony's been public the whole time. All right, now you take a look at Sony. Out of curiosity, you go back to, whoops, one more, you gotta get the full run. Uh, here is the year 1999, folks. There is May, so to, to, to Barron's, to, to their credit, we'll give them a little credit, okay, in May, now, this, this is actually dated May 31st, 1999, all right? So we might as well just call it June, 
Okay, in June of 1999, you had Sony trading opening at about 46. You did have a triple banger run towards the end of that year to 157. But then, folks, you never saw $100 again until 2021 on Sony shares. So much for them taking over the world. Uh, do you have any idea on how Amazon traded since then? You back it up to uh, May of 99, and you're talking about 50 bucks as well. So Amazon and Sony were trading at almost the same exact price when that article came out of about $50 a share. Sony went up to 150 and then traded down at basically between 50 and 100 for the better part of 20 years. Amazon, as we all know, is now trading at $3,288. Now, I bring that up, okay, because that's cool in its own right, okay? Dell, Dell had success uh, uh, much more so, I imagine, but they got taken private, so I don't even know. You know, maybe that's just a misperception, misconception of perception on my part, um, but pretty staggering when you look that out. So Bezos is, has a point there. You know, it's a pretty strong article to be written on Barron's back then. There were a lot of people wrong about the market, though, folks, in May of 1999. Uh, you take a look at the S&P for some curiosity alone. You go back to 99 in May, and you're talking about an S&P trading at 1300 Okay, uh, the market really falling out of bed uh, the next year, May, June, July, et cetera. You had the S&P trading down to a low of, what was it, 820? No, 8, 8 change, 7, 771 maybe, something like that. Now, I bring up Tesla and Amazon because I, I take a look at that and I, I do all of that before I even see that Elon Musk takes this opportunity to troll the man himself uh, by throwing up a silver medal. What is the silver medal reference as the first quote uh, is here? Well, it references that uh, the man Jeff Bezos has been knocked down the totem pole, the number two for the richest man in the world, as Elon Musk has taken that top spot. Uh, Golds Jeff Bezos after extending lead as the world's richest person. So it's interesting here that SpaceX just came out with a $100 billion valuation in their recent funding round. So you combine what he's got going on with Tesla and SpaceX, Musk is now at 222 billion and Bezos is sitting at 190.8, a lead of almost 32 billion dollars. Now what's always interesting here is that you had Jeff Bezos's wife Mackenzie when they got their divorce taking a huge chunk of that. I think it was about 25% of their total holdings. He got 75%, she got 25%. So his ownership was cut by a quarter. Uh, but nonetheless, interesting, Elon Musk, uh, one of the best self-promoters out there, never misses an opportunity. Bezos with a little bit of patting himself on the back and Elon Musk throws up the silver medal uh, to comm commemorate Mr. Uh, Jeff Bezos getting knocked down to the number two slot. Uh, really interesting to see how these two will jockey back and forth. Uh, I'm not sure Tesla, you know, might just be a rocket ship to the upside because they've just been accelerating so far up recently. I mean, you back it up to April of last year, folks, you were trading at $89 in Tesla. You're trading at $785, whereas Amazon's been in quite a consolidation recently. This is, again, a monthly. You've been in a consolidation for the better part of about 16 months in Amazon shares. You're trading at $3288 this morning. <coughs> but you add into that the way that you have – um, Musk's SpaceX really kicking Bezos's Blue Origins, but that's a lot of value when you talk about the billions of dollars. They were just valued at seventy billion, I think, back in February. They raised more money now; they're valued at a hundred billion for that space company, and they are battling it out as well uh, as you have Bezos, I believe, suing. Yeah, Bezos's Blue Origin is challenging the U.S. government contract with SpaceX to develop technology to land people on the moon again. And uh, Musk has been trolling them. It seems like SpaceX is well ahead of Blue Origin, especially when it comes to government contracts and the like, uh, but nonetheless out there battling. Okay, what else we got going on? Jumping around to some of the other stocks. So we talked about the banks, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, all out with their numbers. We also get some other stocks out with their numbers this week. We get Delta. Let's jump over to some of the airlines. We'll put it back to a daily. Delta shares this morning down a bit. We got a bid ask of 4305 to 4309. You close Friday at 4338. 
these airline stocks now, you look where we were back when the markets really accelerated, when you got the vaccine efficacy. We're going back to November 1st of last year, about 11 months ago. You trade up to 52.28. It's a nice area, 37.73. The Delta's showing some support. Not sure you're going to get back down there, but we bounced on a couple occasions. The 618, 37.73. You've accelerated up to 43.38. Now I'm going to pull this one off here. All right, I'm going to zoom in on the action that we've had. I think that gets us back to where I want to be. I want to give you a Fibonacci number of just this recent run, okay, that we've had. Because you are right at that 382 there, folks, okay? Take a look at where we are. That is the run we had just from September 15th when you had Disney at 3882. You accelerate up to about 46 bucks. You trade back to the 382, and that's on 4328. Uh, and we're trading within a few pennies of that. We got a bid ask about 4305, 4309 Delta shares. Now, what's happening here is Delta, they'll be out with their numbers, okay, jumping over on the 13th. So, Wednesday as well. Right now, you're talking about, I don't think they have the move priced in yet, but when you jump over to the move we're looking at, not really a huge move priced into these uh, equities with the airlines. It's all about the future, not about the past. Uh, but we'll take a look at some others because Southwest has some real issues going on right now as they're canceling almost thousands of flights. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the opening bell. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Well, welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&Ps negative by five points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by about 60. Dow and the Russell barely in the positive commodity wise, whether it's currency wise, commodity wise, Bitcoin yet again surging higher by two thousand one hundred ninety five dollars. Look at that action. Fifty seven thousand. 375. It's been a straight shot since September 30th. You were trading at 41,000, adding 16 grand to the price of a Bitcoin, let alone you back things up to when we were below 30,000. Remember when uh, the end was in sight for Bitcoin? Crude oil, 81.12. Quite an acceleration for crude. We got gold down about two bucks this morning at 17.54. Let's check out the VIX this morning with markets open. You get the volatility index trading at 19.63. All right, so I talked about uh, the airlines. I was bringing up Delta. They have their numbers this week. Checking out Southwest. Southwest, gap and lower this morning, down 3.54%. Southwest, taking a look a little bit, little bit longer term time frame here. You had COVID lows, we'll call it, of 22.47. You accelerate to 64.75. The run really began in November. Not oh, really. I mean, it, it was, remember, domestic airlines and the travel is really starting to get ahead of the trend here. Um, things took off worldwide when you got a vaccine, but domestically, you really had the acceleration almost begin in August when you were at 30 bucks. By the time we got the vaccine efficacy, you were already at 40 bucks. You make it to 64.75. Now, the whole run, you had some nice support at that 382. I mean, look at that move, folks, on a weekly. We had Southwest chopping around the other 382 of its entire run for the better part from July 19th all the way to almost September 20th, two full months. All right, eight or nine weekly bars. This thing was sitting near the 382. It almost touched the 382 uh, on all of those weeks as it stayed above that line. Right now, though, you're gapping back down to 51.99. Now, what it has to do with, man, these are big numbers on Southwest, and I'm not sure how they fared so poorly if this didn't reverberate around to the other airlines okay they cancel more than a quarter of their scheduled flights on sunday citing issues with air traffic control and disruptive weather as it works to resume normal operations over a thousand flights 1018 to be exact 28 percent of the total for the day were canceled by the dallas-based carrier that's as of 4 15 yesterday um more than 500 other flights were delayed i mean it's almost like system wide for them the disruption started friday when weather conditions in florida were compounded by air traffic control issues in the same region a spokesman said recovering from such issues is more difficult these days because there are fewer frequencies between cities i mean the the way that these problems reverberate right now because everything is so barely able to function and i'm not that i'm exaggerating but you can see that we see supply issues across the board right well any mishap at all is just going to make things much worse than it might have if things were running smoothly okay normally probably they might be able to catch up or something like that well guess what they can't catch up when they've canceled flights they're not at the same level that they're at they don't have the number of employees that they probably had right they're having trouble with getting employees in the into their jobs as many companies are right now uh nonetheless other u.s airlines reported far fewer disruptions on sunday so where's where's the difference here? OK, air traffic control issues and weather. That's not usually something that isolates to one airline. Uh, be interesting to see what ends up coming out here. Three canceled flights for Delta. Three. It was a thousand eighteen for for Unite uh, for Southwest. Uh, nine for United and American did have some numbers there. One forty three. The flight cancellations come amid concern over federally mandated vaccine requirements, staffing issues, as they're talking about here. Uh, on Friday, Southwest pilots asked a court to temporarily block the company from enforcing the mandate until an existing lawsuit uh, resolved. In September, you had an Allied Pilots Association, a union repping pl uh, pilots, releasing a statement requesting alternatives. Uh, not outlandish for the union to be fighting for everything for their employees there, but nonetheless, Southwest, I would watch out here because I'm not sure what's going on, but that is quite a cancellation you have, and they're blaming weather and air traffic controllers, and that is something all the other airlines have to deal with, but somehow it seemed to basically bring the com almost the entire company to a halt yesterday, and how are they going to catch up if they couldn't catch up from Friday, folks? They have less numbers. They now have almost two days worth of flights they have to make up for. Uh, you're down 4.1%. Well, Put it on the short term, and there you see the acceleration right out of the gate to lower prices for Southwest. Now, when are they out with their numbers? Let's jump over to the earnings front. So uh, that's next week, I believe. 
Yep, they're out next Thursday with their numbers southwest. Let's jump around to some of the others. We get Delta this week. Delta's out Wednesday with their numbers. We just pulled up southwest. Let's stay for domestic for a second with JetBlue. Whoops, JBLU is their symbol. They'll be coming out in about two weeks. Uh, yes, so you're talking about uh, two weeks from tomorrow. JetBlue without their numbers. We'll jump back to the big airlines. American out What's that, next Thursday as well? Yep, next Thursday they'll be out with theirs, and we'll finish it up with United right now. As I say, it, all the markets in the red. United out next week as well. What's that, next Tuesday? Uh, yes, let's jump to the cruise ships, because this is an interesting sector, folks. Now, cruise is a different story. They were just out with their numbers, I believe. Were they? Yeah, they were. Carnival just out with their numbers in the end of September, uh, down 1.3% with the market right now. Man, these cruise ships just can't find a bid, right? Things really started to accelerate September. I said to myself, ah, maybe that's the run. There will be a run, folks. There will be a run, I imagine, as in these things will catch a bid. The The future will be bright, um, but not yet. <laughs> as we just pulled back, I mean, the percentages in these equities, 2739, September 27th, right? Just like that, you're down four bucks. You're down 15% almost from where we were. And the better part of almost two weeks ago, just like that, let alone the run we had when we went from 31 down to below 20 on this equity. Now, you take a look at a three-year weekly for the cruise ships. You can see we were at far higher prices, though, prior to COVID. You make it down to 780. We're still sitting at the doldrums on this. Now, Boeing, well, let's finish it off with the cruise ships real quick. Norwegian, similar action. Let's take this off real quick. Pulling back from the acceleration we had. The so weekly last couple weeks 26 25 could make an argument though that this is trending upward i mean that's a pretty defined trend channel of where we're hitting there lining up on the lows maybe the upper portions matching up with some of these highs there you know maybe you use a little bit of linear regression to match those up let's activate whoops it's an art not a science folks let's activate that drawing real quick so we can kind of play with where it might fall uh, but you can see we're sitting at 26 bucks. It chopped around. If that's a trend channel, we're talking about $40. You can see for Norwegian. Now, Boeing, I bring it up because Boeing's sitting right at. This is a weekly. Going back to the lows we had at COVID lows, we'll call them. March 16th, $89 on Boeing. A couple times buyers have gotten burned on this, folks. The market really got ahead of itself in June of 2020. Boeing got all the way up to 234 You're still in a losing position in Boeing. If you had gotten into this thing in June of last year, let alone you had to ride it out all the way down to 141, you make it up to a high of 278 in March, you've given up $50, you've given up almost 20% on that equity, but you're sitting right at that lower boundary line. That's a nice entry. Uh, you can always set your stop. Maybe you set it under where we've been recently, the low of about 206. You're in at 226. You catch a run in Boeing. Maybe you're pushing up to the 250 to 230. Maybe you come up and you test this high at about 278. We did have some volume up here. You know, nothing like we had on this first run we got in last May, but you did have some volume up here. I mean, on a weekly basis, you're talking about 128 million shares. You're talking about 129 million shares. You can see we're pulling back with 50 million, 50, 60, 70, 50 million. Stay tuned, folks. We come right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, 
is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for valued tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. 12 minutes into the trading week, and we got markets green across the board with the S&Ps now positive by two points at 43.85. NASDAQ 100 catching a bid. Check out that pop right now. 14,820, positive by 14. The Dow's up 23 points right now. Russell up by two. You see the action, putting it on a one minute just to see the divergence we've got since we started trading at 930. You have the Russell, pretty tame action right where we started off. You have the Dow, pretty similar to the Russell right now. You had some volatility, but pretty close to where we actually started trading at 930. S&Ps though, and NASDAQ especially, you're talking about higher price. S&Ps have popped almost 10 points from the open. We've had the NASDAQ 100 really accelerate, uh, as has been the case usually, as you're getting a pop to about 80 points to the upside right now. 14,747 is where we open. You're trading 14,822. Bitcoin continuing to run as well. We almost got a 58,000 price in Bitcoin. Gold catching a bid too. Look at that one minute action we had in gold. 820 this morning or so. You're up at 17.58. You trade down $10. We've gotten it all back to 17.58 right now. Again, these are one-minute charts just to see the run we've had from the open. Silver, not quite the same as gold. You see, silver, I mean, look at the difference, right? Silver was at 22.62, down to 22.55. Now well above where we were at 8.15. Always interesting how silver and gold trade a little bit differently. Uh, and then notes and bonds, a little bit of higher price, clawing back some of that yield. Now, what's interesting here is it's Columbus Day today. I almost forgot, really. Um, much bigger holiday in New England as you got the Boston Marathon, which returns with COVID-19 era restrictions. So with fall foliage replacing the spring daffodils is how they put it. More masks uh, than Mylar blankets. But nonetheless, uh, the pandemic delayed 125th Boston Marathon at left Hopkinton on Monday for its long awaited run to Copley Square. So you get the marathon rock and they're probably finishing up right now um with those champs being about two hours or so but you get the boston marathon up there for columbus day now what you do have here is you got most stores open uh fedex ups they'll be doing business stock markets open as we know we're here uh but you have a lot of whether it's agencies uh for the federal government you have the federal reserve banks closed most banks closed one exception is td bank not sure how that plays out or how so. Uh, U.S. Postal Service, they will not be delivering packages today. U.S. bond markets, 
closed as well. And then any agency or institution operated by the government, such as libraries, federal offices, uh, DMVs, they will be closed today as well. Um, we'll try and see at that next break if we can get a little Boston Marathon update. Uh, always a fun day to check that out when I was up in the Northeast. Kids will get off school. Not much, not much the case down here. Um, not as big of a holiday. Work open, kids open, schools open. Nonetheless, we march on. All right, what else we got going on? Checking around too. What do we have? I did have stocks making moves up here. I'll pull it back in a bit. Uh, you know what I want to jump to? Yeah, let's jump to, where are we? Yeah, I covered those. All right, we'll jump to some of the other equities we have coming up with their numbers. And we're going to jump to, here we go. Uh, I want to cover Domino's Pizza. There's the stock. Now, this thing has been on fire. Domino's Pizza, there's your minute action down on the open. We'll put it back to a daily to see the run this has had. Now, man, they really accelerated last earnings and quite a reversal, right? You wouldn't think sometimes and an equity can give back an entire run like that. You had Domino's gap above on their numbers on July 22nd. You trade up to 548, that then closes the entire gap. You're back to 475. They crushed it out of the park on those numbers, rightfully so, to trade from 480 to 550 almost on that equity. Now we take a look at a three-year weekly for some full context. You were at 220 in 2019. You came into COVID. Now they had gangbuster earnings before COVID, OK, you trade up to a price of about 381. You trade back down to 275 on COVID. Market figures out pretty quickly that delivering food is going to be a good business to be in during a pandemic. Nonetheless, you make it back down to almost that area at 319. Things really take off man. in March of this year. Quite a run. Now, just for some context here in terms of the retracement we're dealing with. OK, not even back to a 382 of the full run we had here. You go from 319 to 548. You almost touched that area. We made it down to 468. That's last week. OK, the 382 was 461. Now jump it back to a 15 minute. We'll jump over to the analyze tab. We jump to the earnings. They're out with their numbers on Thursday. Decent action in terms of the volatility that you got priced in. That's a $30 move. It's a $475 equity. So what is that? You're talking about maybe a 7% move. Um, priced into their numbers and they'll be out yes on thursday with their numbers and uh this has some movement you know from 472 to 492 back down to 475 so far this morning these are 15 minute bars we're looking at the other stock we get that's on the radar is walgreens boots now walgreens boots taking a look at the three-year weekly make it down at the end of last year to 3336 i'll put it back to a daily to see the run we've had this year 57 bucks we're at 47 bucks right now <clears throat> Excuse me. Just for some context, I like to know where we are on the Fibonacci scale of possible retracements from runs we've had. Let's pull it up on this one. On this one, the run really began when the market took off, basically about a year ago in October. And you're dealing with maybe a 50% number that it likes with some support, about 4509. You're sitting at 4775. That's what you got to bounce back in July for Walgreens boots. You jump over to them. So they're out with their numbers on Thursday as well. About a $2.61 move, $47 stock. Uh, so what is that? About, yeah, that's less than, uh, no, it's about a 5 6%, 6% move priced into their numbers as they'll come up with their numbers right now on Thursday. Uh, interesting to see where that goes. Just like the market, getting a little bit ahead of itself to 57 bucks, you're back to 47 bucks. Uh, some of the stocks I've been taking a look at, just to take a peek, maybe put them on your radar, folks. FedEx, quite a pullback. You're basically flat this morning. If you back it up to where we were when the run really began last May, when the market again figured out delivering packages that are ordered online, probably a good business to be in. But man, oh man, did they not figure out that costs would be on the rise? If you recall, FedEx, hopefully not a harbinger of things to come. Because, man, they came out late in the last earnings cycle. And you're talking about spending $450 million bucks over 90 days more than they had spent a year ago. FedEx 223, again, putting it back on the five-year weekly to see the run this thing has had. You get back to a 618, a 186, not sure you're going to get back there, folks. That's an area I would definitely be looking to add FedEx right now. All right, at these prices, you jump over to the Fundamentals tab on the Thinkorswim platform. You're talking about a company only valued at $59 billion dollars. Uh, you trade down another 10 or 20 percent. You're talking about a company almost under $50 billion market cap, a company like FedEx that I imagine has a very bright future, even though they're going to be competing with Amazon, with UPS, 
Um, but I imagine they have a bright future as that market cap could sink. So maybe 186, keep that on your radar if you get a trade lower um, from FedEx to that price level. Another one I was looking at this weekend, it's really gotten a little bit ahead of itself, but Airbnb, uh, you know, maybe on a pullback to see some real nice strength here coming off a double bottom low it had back in May, had a low in again in July. I think the IPO price was 140 on this. Yeah, I'll pull that up, Airbnb. I think it was 140. Uh, all right, I'll find it real quickly. Uh, 139 a share, I believe. Uh, no, let me check that at the next break. Uh, nonetheless, some strength. You know, I'm trying to look for exposure in areas, folks, that you make got a rotation. You know, the, the airlines have been hurt, right? Boeing's been hurt. They still have a long way to go, but eventually that tide will shift where COVID won't, won't be front of mind, whether it's worldwide, whether it's domestic. Uh, Airbnb may be getting ahead of that, trading from 130 to 170 over the last four or five months. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we got markets in the green. S&P's up by four. All the markets dramatically in the green now. Dow up 123. Russell up 10, catching a bit. I got to chart a Peloton up there, chatting, uh, talking about Peloton in the YouTube Tiger Stand right now, saying uh, Peloton up, up a percent today. This is a weekly chart I have up here. I'll jump back to a daily in a moment, uh, saying potential double bottom. 
Uh, and you could. I mean, you have quite a decisive bounce here when you go back to their earnings in May. All right, you were down to a price point of 80.48. You make it down last week to 81 on four, dramatically lighter volume. Uh, I would be wary of this one, though. Um, you know, you look up the valuation of a company like this. Okay, now they're out with their numbers October 28th. You're talking about a company still valued at $26 billion selling bikes and selling subscriptions the subscription part is the savior there in terms of the last year and a half they've been able to sign people onto their subscription base for their classes at record level as somebody that enjoys being healthy folks as somebody that loves riding a bike uh they've brought the price down which actually was something that made me look at them for the first time in a while but still spending fifteen hundred dollars for a bike for the privilege to pay a very high expensive monthly rate i mean the cost this is my own personal taste here okay because peloton's done fantastic over the last you know year and a half two years from 17 bucks up to 170 but man we've just cut in half the price um the subscription price for peloton is more expensive than i pay for a subscription to la fitness and that la fitness has a gym showers a pool that you can do laps in let alone the, the number of equipment that you'd like in there okay it has a steam bath i think it has a dry sauna excuse me not a steam bath okay it's a very affordable, basic gym, LA Fitness. Nonetheless, I can't rationalize spending almost 50 bucks a month for classes I watch online that, yeah, you get to compete with the people in it and all that stuff. I can't rationalize it, folks, um, because I know how easy it would be to put out a similar product for very inexpensive when all they're showing me are streamed classes for almost double what I'm paying for an LA Fitness membership. I mean, maybe this thing, you talk about an ABC down, if your A point's 171 and your B point's 80, you're going back to 40 bucks on this equity. If it gets back to 40 bucks, I might be a buyer. And that's only cut in half. You just got cut in half once this year, it's possible. Maybe be a little patient, see how it reacts here. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned, Basil's up next, live pro.